I'm just extremely excited to show you the worst streaming platform ever made. And that's not an opinion, it's an objective truth. I'm sure you're subscribed to many different streaming platforms and I'm sure there's some that you feel are better than others, but I promise you there is none worse than what I'm about to unveil to you right now. I just learned about it from a couple of YouTubers who covered it, Curtis Connor and Chad Chad. It's a platform known as Real Short. More like real shit, am I right? More like feel short, because I'm five foot six and it hurts. Real Short is a new platform that just launched pretty recently. Let's take a peek at this catalog here, because they got some fucking heavy hitters. The Double Life of My Billionaire Husband, Fatal Temptation Between Two Alphas, Goodbye My CEO, Faded to My Forbidden Alpha, My Gorgeous Wife is an Ex-Convict, The Reborn Wife Redemption. <laughs> you cannot convince me these aren't chat GPT generated titles for like throwaway romance novels. This sounds like some shit Chuck Tingle would write. Chuck Tingle is an author known for things like Dr. Bigfoot Attorney at Large Pounded My Butt in Court, Space Raptor Butt Invasion. This is that level of title for these real shorts romance movies. Fucking Goodbye My CEO and Hello to Ghost Pirates That Haunt My Butt. Now I bet you're just foaming at the mouth salivating for some of these incredibly enticing films. But what if I told you that the idea behind this is even worse than you could possibly imagine? It's not just cheaply made movies that cost less than $50 to produce and put on the platform. It actually goes a step further into unreal lunacy. So, they will film like a 45 minute or an hour long movie, but they try and make it fit into the modern brain rot zoomer who can't digest more than 30 seconds at a time. So... That 45 minute or hour long movie is broken up into 50 to 60 episodes on the Real Shorts platform and each episode is about a minute long at most. So you watch these movies scene by scene, but it gets worse. We've only just scratched the surface of this scab and it only is continuing to fester beneath. So you can't even watch scene by scene until you finish the film. They have their own form of currency on the platform and in order to watch the next scene after you finish one, you have to pay for it. And how do you earn that currency? By watching ads. But not just like a normal ad break, which will sometimes be longer than the entire fucking scene you just watched, but you'll have to marathon ads in order to earn enough currency to pay for your next scene in the movie. So what happens is, you sit down to watch your favorite movie, Faded to My Forbidden Alpha, you meet Beta Drake and you're like, damn, what's Beta Drake about to do next after the Alpha is just fucking flexed on him? And you can't wait for the next scene, but then bang, you're out of real shorts schmeckles and you can't pay for it. So now you have to spend like five minutes watching ads so that way you can afford to watch the next scene in the movie. It's so unbelievably degenerate. Now, Curtis Connor in his video on this pulled up one of the developer responses on a review where someone was complaining about how many ads they have to watch in order to just get the next scene. And this is what they said. Hi, you have 15 to 20 ads to unlock episodes for free per day. Each ad is up to 5 to 45 seconds. Our team is working hard to improve users' experience. You can also earn free bonus with following ways. 1. Daily check-ins. 2. Watch ads every day. <laughs> Oh, perfect. That's just what I wanted out of my streaming platform. A place where I can go to watch ads every day so that way I can kind of get drip-fed the worst movies ever made. You can replay the whole series after you unlock all the episodes. Many users like real short stories. Your higher star will give our team a great incentive. Th this is not a real human being. This has to be an AI experiment. This is primitive Skynet that's just testing human stupidity. I can't help but appreciate the shamelessness to after all of the hoopla about ads, then say, give us more stars because it's good incentive for the team. <laughs> you fucking goofball. This is the worst idea I've ever seen. I am sure you watching this have had some bad ideas in your life, but rest easy knowing no idea you've ever had is this bad. But you know what's not a bad idea? Going to my first live event that's five days from now. It'll be September 8th through September 10th. There's still tickets available, so get them while they're still around. We're going to be doing meet and greets as well as filming a music video with all of you that attend. And most importantly, celebrating a world championship win, hopefully, for our team. 
And I haven't mentioned this before because I completely forgot to, but the venue we're doing it at, the Stras Center, is actually offering discounts to all of the local universities. So if you're a student at like USF, University of Tampa, Full Sail, FGCU, UCF, you can get a discount on tickets. Tickets are $25 per day or 60 for all three days. It'll be about five hours-ish per day worth of fun, just a big party. So get the tickets at strandcenter.org. I'll put a link in the description. It starts September 8th, so we're, we're coming up on it. Now I've gone over all the shortcomings of the platform itself, but what about the quality of the movies? Does it make up for it? Are the movies good? And the answer is yes, if you're missing your frontal lobe. These abominations can't even really be called movies. That term is getting used real loosey-goosey here. That is being super generous. If I accidentally turned my phone camera on and hit record while going to the grocery store and had it recording the entire time in my pocket, that would be closer to a feature film than anything on real short. All of these videos feel like they were made by Darman after coming close to death with a fentanyl overdose. And then he also just happened to really get into producing some softcore porn shots. Because surprisingly, there's some actual softcore porn on this platform that doesn't verify your age, by the way, which is really weird, sketchy shit. It's all just a disaster top to bottom. Uh, the drink you asked for? Bitch. Are you blind? Jackson is obviously busy. <laughs> Here's just an appetizer to wet your whistle. This is faded to my forbidden alpha. Curtis Connor and Chad Chad covered this more in depth. I just want to show you some clips from some of my favorites that I've watched on there so far. Everything on here feels like it's directed by Tommy Wiseau if he got really into Wattpad fanfic. So this is episode one right here and they're coming out of the gates swinging. So this lady's making out with Alpha Jackson and everyone in this world is either addressed as Alpha or Beta. There's Beta Luke, Beta everyone here. And this is an Alpha. So you're looking at the, the cream of the crop. And this girl who is an orphan, and they never let you forget she's an orphan because they always just remind her, you're an orphan, you better address me as Alpha, orphan bitch, comes in with a drink and then this lady's like, how dare you interrupt us smooching? We're making out here, can't you see, Buster? So she gets up and slaps the devil out of her and drops her drink. And then the episode ends with Alpha Jackson immediately reminding her that she's an orphan. Why won't you call me Alpha? You jealous? Is that what this is? You wish you were the chick being screwed? Not jealous. Sorry for interrupting. It's just Alexander Kane, just RSVP. By episode 3 and 4, she walks in on Alpha Jackson pumping his yogurt in that same lady, and then he says, Why won't you call me Alpha? And then Beta Luke interrupts everything. The show is <laughs> fucking beautifully disastrous. It is so weird. A packless orphan, so what if I knew? I reject you, Celine. <laughs> Being rejected by an Alpha must be brutal. If you beg. I accept your rejection, Jackson. Being rejected by an alpha is a fate worse than death. I don't know how she was able to endure. I understand this is all fantasy, but I couldn't imagine the pain and torment that must come with being rejected by an alpha. The only thing I could imagine worse than this is being accepted by a beta. This really makes you stop and think, why? Who the fuck made this? Who wrote this? I really think it is AI generated, but let's suspend disbelief for a moment and assume that somehow living, breathing human beings with a pulse actually sat down and wrote this. Their minds need to be studied because this is impressively bad. Like this makes Attaway General look like a masterpiece. Now the one I really wanted to watch was this, my husband killed me, then I won the Mega Ball. That's one of those really weird, confusing, long-winded titles like sometimes you see in anime. The time I reincarnated as a vending machine in an online RPG, I thought I had it made till my mom hunted me with multi-targeted attacks. Like, this title grips me. So, she died, and then won the Mega Ball. It's, it's an interesting series of events here. 
Adoria Cummins gets murdered by her husband and is taken back in time. She uses the knowledge from her previous life to get revenge on all of those who wronged her, starting with winning the Mega Ball. Then comes Elijah Snyder, a lawyer who seems to have her best interest in mind, but there's just something about him that seems too familiar. I was hooked. I watched the first episode. I can't record on their app. They actually forbid it. They even give you a message saying you can't watch or you may face legal <laughs> action on their behalf. Which is interesting because they do post a lot of the episodes for free on their YouTube channel. I guess it's just going in-app and doing it. They frown upon. But it's all completely fair use to just showcase a couple of scenes here. But anyway, there, there's no reason to because after watching the first episode, I was hit with the wall. I was then going to have to do my chores and watch some ads if I wanted to see the following episode. Then I would have once again had to go back and eat my vegetables with more ads to get the next episode. So I didn't really get to indulge in what could have been one of the finest pieces of cinematic beauty the world has ever been graced by. With my husband killed me, then I won the Powerball or whatever the fuck it was. So, unfortunate I didn't get to watch all of it. It's not on their YouTube channel, so I can't show you anything from it either. Which is a shame, but I think we can all safely just assume it was fucking awful. Episode 1 was pretty bad already, and I already know it wasn't going to get any better than that. So yeah, I just wanted to talk about this a little bit, because this is such a wild and wacky, awful idea for a streaming service, as well as awful ideas for the movies on there. Though, hats off to them for making their own exclusives, they at least gave it a try. They gave it a whirl. They didn't just repackage already made things in like 30 second chunks. They at least tried to make their own. But maybe they should outsource that to a, a different studio to make something good. But even then, the entire idea of the platform is fucking terrible from the get-go. The whole idea of it is just to monetize each individual user to its absolute maximum. Nickel and dime for everything they're worth by shoving ads down their face that way they can get the most juice for the squeeze here on each ad served to whatever poor soul happened to end up in this barren wasteland of a platform. So yeah, just wanted to talk about it a bit. That's it. See ya.